Hey guys, it's Jeff with Make It and Fix It. I'm here with Mikey, the birthday boy. Hello. Today's his 11th birthday. So happy birthday, Mikey. Okay. We're up back up at the Bushcraft Base Camp trying to find our, our spot, which we're getting pretty close. Um, we got a little bit of rain last week, but it didn't really help much. We're still, we're still at stage two. Well, actually, now we're at stage two fire restrictions. Uh, my last video, we were at stage one. That was what three weeks ago? Yeah. Three weeks, I think. And uh, so three weeks ago, we had stage one. Now we're at stage two, which means no open fires. Actually, no fires in the woods at all. Um, we're allowed to have camp stoves. Anything that you can turn off, we're allowed to have. Other than that, we are not allowed, not permitted to have it in the in the forest. They're worried about fires, which justified. Um, right now, they've got a couple fires going in Arizona. The tender fire and the, uh, what's the other fire going? I can't remember the name of the other one, but they're raging pretty good. The tender fire last I heard was at 10,000 acres and growing, and the moisture helped them out a little bit, but it didn't do a whole lot. They're still, they're still fighting it, so. Oh, I just found our base camp right over here. So, um, today we're going to be finishing up the raised bed. We're going to be putting some, see if we can find some cross logs for that. And we're also going to be trying out for Mikey's birthday. He got a hammock. So we're going to try hanging that. And I think I might hang my hammock. See if we can find a shady spot. Put those up and maybe relax a little bit and because we couldn't have a fire up here today what did we bring Mikey pizza that's right we brought cold pizza hey do with what you can you know so stay with us and we'll take you step by step through this base camp I think if we get this bed done today We'll start working on a on a uh, fire reflector, even though we can't have a fire. Eventually, we will be able to. And uh, once we get that fire reflector done, we'll uh, start gathering wood. And you know, we can just stockpile wood, put it up here, so we don't have to, so we can come up and just camp. We don't have to worry about working that much. So uh, right here's the base camp.
seems to be un, unmessed with. And there's a couple things moved around, but one of our bed logs over there has been moved. So I think somebody must have found our spot. But it's it's all there. Nothing messed with really. So we'll get that straightened out, notch these logs so they don't they kind of interlock with each other. And then we'll call it we'll start laying the cross logs on there for the bed. Cool. What do what you say? <laughs> So I'm going to do a bit of a gear layout for you. Today, I've got my I got my mossy oak backpack, and I got a couple additions here. This is actually my uh, this hatchet here. Let's see if I can get it off. This is actually a Harbor Freight cheap hatchet that I modified. I made an axe, axe mask for it. That's just scrap leather that I made. And then this is actually a true temper handle, a uh, hickory handle that I put on there. And I made this little, the handle protector out of scrap leather. So, and this one works pretty good. Um, we're gonna be using that today, that right there. And then I've got my bushcraft knife that I made. This is uh, just basically one inch plate steel that I made this out of. And I did kind of a, it started as a Scandinavian grind and I wound up just doing a, a convex edge on it. And it's a, it keeps a really sharp, sharp edge. I really like this knife, it turned out great. And this is actually, um, the scales on it are actually alligator juniper. And I learned after I made this that alligator juniper sawdust is toxic. And I wound up sick for a couple days after I made it. So, But the knife turned out really well. And then I made a little scabbard for it. I have a, my little scrap leather bag. And then Mikey has got a few things. He's got himself a mora that he got for his birthday. And that's just the Mora, Mora Companion. Is that the name of it? Yeah. Companion? Yeah. So far it's a really good knife, Scandinavian grind. He's got the little, I'm going to make him a little leather, hold, leather scabbard for it. And then I've got this little steel uh, saw that I'm going to be, that Mikey's going to be using. And it comes with this cool little holster for it. We'll see how that one does. And it's really cool because it's the belt loop that's on it. It has a little clip and I've got that attached to my backpack right there. So it just clips on my backpack like that. And it ain't going nowhere. Check that out. That's pretty cool, huh? So, and then I brought my, brought my mechanics gloves. Because I'm last, last time we were out, I messed my hands up pretty bad doing all the, all the, the saw work. And we got plenty of water. It's supposed to be about 92 degrees today. Um, and it's dry and it's hot. And we've already built the sweat coming up here. And are you trying to pull that out? Yeah. Here, hand it here. Let me show you how to get that out of there. And Mikey's got his new hatchet that he got for his birthday yesterday. A friend of his got it for him. And that is uh, outdoor equipment, I believe, but it's it's a pretty nice knife or a pretty nice uh, hatchet. Come on over and show it to you. It's got a. This is kind of a gut hook slash cordage knife, and this thing is super sharp. It's actually kind of cool because it it looks like you can use it as a knife as well as a hatchet. So it's really cool, and it came with a fire steel got this little that little fire steel that comes with it this side is magnesium that wrapped around and this is the ferro rod right here 
that came with it. So that's pretty cool. We won't be using that today. We can't have any kind of spark or any kind of ignition up here. So, all right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Mikey. All right. And with this, because this is our bed, we're going to be knocking these little pokies off of here. So, Mikey, I'm going to assign that to you, okay? Assign what? Knocking these pokies off. Oh, okay. With what? My hatchet? Your little hatchet. Um, here you go. Just set it down. to the other side of the log. You don't want to swing it on the same side as your leg. You want to make sure if I miss, it goes out and away. It doesn't come at me. Okay, the bed's all set. The shelter's, the back of the shelter's done. What we're gonna do for the back is we're probably gonna put, take a tarp and put a tarp over the top here. Like just a temporary thing until we can get enough leaves. I don't think there's gonna be, there's not a whole lot of leaves. This, I mean, this is, this is mineral dirt right here and there's I mean there's duff but it's all needles there's not a whole lot of leaves we can try to gather some up and pile it up there but I don't think it's gonna be um, don't think it's gonna be waterproof so I think what we're gonna do if we if we very seldom do we camp and there's actually rain but in the summer there is that chance so if we camp up here in the summer we're gonna have to do something with the um, do something to waterproof it so we're, next thing is we're going to be putting a fire putting our fire reflector right here we're going to be building that out of rocks uh, there is tons of rocks up here and they're good hard granite rocks so that's going to go right there 
and Mikey looks tired and his little hatchet's working pretty good but dad being the goober that he is do 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 right there I put that sucker right across my thumb so we just had a little bit of a little bit of a bloodbath there it was no big deal I got the bleeding stopped and got it luckily I had some first aid stuff in the in my backpack but that's why I always carry it so it's good to have Komoda, Komoda Outfitters. I'm gonna give it a shot. This is Mikey's. Here's how we wound up with them. It's windy, you can hear it, see it. And these are parachutes, man. But this was Mikey's, and his he was pretty comfortable in his. And that's mine. It's a little bit low. I need to find some trees that are a little bit further apart and get the hang of those straps. Those straps, I'm not happy with them. Those are the Ohuhu straps. Um, I'm gonna try to get some of these which these are slick the way these work is they have different steps and You just hook that carabiner right through each step and it's a Komoda Komoda I think outfitters and look how long this thing is Comes all the way down here. Look at that. Isn't that slick? I like that so I think I'm gonna be trying to set up some straps like that even if I make them myself, I can do it, you know. So, or I'll just bring some paracord and self-adjust it myself, you know, do it myself.
finish it up with this one. That's our view. What do you think? Yeah. Now, guess what we're going to do? Go get some firewood, stock it up. Thank mm -hmm. you. Quite a bit done today. We got the uh, got the bed finished, uh, and we got the uh, fire pit done and the fire reflector. I liked how that fire reflector turned out. We'll see how it does for the for a camping trip. Um, but all in all, I'd say it was a pretty successful day. We even got a nap and came up and had some fun. Do you have anything to say? What he said. You can do better than that. No, I can't. So we're headed back to the truck now. Um, we found a closer way to get up here. And we didn't know this, but right on the other side, of, there's a rock outcropping up on top of the hill above the, above the base camp. The dirt road, there's a quad trail up there that everybody's using. We had about four people come riding up. So, I don't know. We'll see how it turns out for the summer. We'll see after we get monsoon rains coming through, whether or not we actually have the, um, have privacy up here. I'm hoping so. Usually people don't go ride around, riding around at night. And there's not a whole, there's no camping spots near up here. Not for like half a mile in all directions. So, okay, guys, thanks for watching the video. Remember to like and subscribe. And if uh, if you have any comments or questions or anything, go ahead and leave them in the comment section. Uh, we did pretty good today, 
and uh, we appreciate you coming along. So, bye. You hear that, guys? Yeah, that's called an idiot. The reason I say that's an idiot, I'm, there's gunshots right over that hill, okay? There's fire restrictions on right now. No shooting, no campfires. And there's, there's morons over that hill shooting. And here's the thing. Anybody hear of a little thing called the Dosey Fire? Yeah, that was back in 2013. That was the fire before the Yarnell Fire where the Granite Mountain hot shots were killed. The Dosey Fire was started by people out shooting during a fire, during class, or during, during uh, uh, level two fire restrictions. So we have a responsibility to take care of these woods. We are stewards of this land. Everybody is. Not just the forest rangers, not just the guys that, that work up here. All of us. If you step foot out in this forest, you are responsible for it. You're also responsible to leave it better than you found it. Okay? I guarantee you, I'll go up over that hill. I'm a shooter, okay? Don't get me wrong. I love to go out shooting. I love, I love my firearms. I love going out and, and, and just going out shooting, having fun target practicing, you know, getting used to a, to a firearm. It's, a, it's responsible gun ownership. You don't, you, you don't buy a gun without taking it out and practicing with it and learning how to use it correctly. That is not responsible gun ownership. That is idiocy. And if you don't like that, unsubscribe from my channel right now because that I will not tolerate. So if I see them on my way out, you guarantee there's going to be a video on here of me confronting them, putting a stop to their stupidity. Take care of the woods, people. It's the only woods you got. And when it burns, yeah, it'll regrow, but it ain't going to regrow to how it was before. It damages the soil. It damages everything. Okay? The soil takes years to recover after a fire. It crystallizes the soil, and it kills the nutrients in it. Yeah, it comes back stronger, but it takes years. It can take up to 30 years to fix that. So be responsible, people. Be responsible.